I'd practiced law, and uh, well, I, I was admitted to the Texas bar. Then I went up to New York and practiced law up there for four years. Then I decided I was tired of that, and uh, began looking around for some place to go. And my uh, my father had just died, and I thought I needed to be near my mother, uh, and um, to give her all the help I could, uh, and. Uh, so I decided uh, to uh, send out my uh, application to various places around the country, um, and I eventually wound up here. When I was studying in England, I um, was in a bookshop there in, in Oxford, and I uh, found a, a copy of, um, of the third edition of... Uh, Edward Cook's commentaries on Littleton's Tenures, which was a leading old-time uh, English uh, authority on property law. Um, it was uh, on the floor of a bookshop in Oxford, and uh, I picked it up off the floor and took a look at it, and it uh, was priced as about, you know, 12 and a half uh, American money, um, and so I bought it. I've seen copies on the market since, and I saw one on the market recently, but uh, they're not—they're uh, not terribly numerous. I'd seen it advertised for two thousand dollars. Oh, that was back um, in uh, forty-seven to fifty. My grandfather and my great-grandfather did, and I have most of their books. I didn't uh, pursue the buying of books in a very uh, uh, in a very professional way, it just happened. Eventually, as I bought more and more books, uh, more and more book companies sent me their catalogs. Um, so uh, I was tempted uh, and, uh, and found lots of things. And I think I built up a pretty, uh, a pretty decent uh, collection of, of, of books of uh, background of, uh, of uh, legal studies in, in, uh, in America. Finding that that first book was uh, what was a, 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 an unusual discovery. I bought things that seemed to me to fill out the collection uh, in a way that uh, makes it more valuable to the users of a of a law school. You know, the bigger your collection gets, uh, the fewer that it needs. And every um, uh, every so often, one sees something that's strikes you as uh, maybe uh, something that would be good to add that we don't have. Right now, uh, I think the collection has pretty well uh, uh, achieved um, its maximum. Oh, I imagine it's around 6,000. They date back to the uh, uh, end of the 15th century uh, and up to, the, up to the present. Needless to say, because we have an, an Anglo-American uh, uh, legal system, that is, which uh, was developed in England. Uh, we have a, a great many books that, a uh, great many uh, rules of law that originally uh, uh, came from England, and therefore English books are of particular interest to uh, uh, somebody who's doing research in the historical side of the law. Also, though, I've uh, tried to uh, collect uh, uh, various uh, uh, European authors, uh, continental authors, as well as uh, American authors, and a few uh, um, a few others. Uh, but um, it's mainly um, European and American. I don't play favorites. Uh, they're all they all uh, ha have a purpose. Since I'm spending my own money. Uh, I uh, usually try to get my money's worth. I will uh, give the uh, the entire collection to the uh, to SMU Law School. My donation will be uh, testamentary. That is, it'll be in my will. It's here. It seems to me that it should stay here. <clears throat> the library needs it. It seems to me, and that's why I bought it. Um, so uh, I think it should. Uh, stay where it is. This collection was um, of, of, uh, of antiquarian books, uh, was started um, 
um, some years before I joined the faculty by the, uh, by the professor whose portrait is down just right there behind you, down, down the wall. Um, and um, there's one of, one of me that um, a friend of mine uh, uh, got a friend of his to, to paint uh, opposite it right down there, but that's just because, not a matter of vanity on my part, but just that he gave it to the school and that's where it hangs. <laughs>